Hey there, Class Kickers, and welcome to this quick uh, series of tutorials on animation. If you caught one of my sessions at you know a conference or something like that, this is going to be it for you. We're going to be looking at Brush Ninja today, and um, what I hope to do is to walk you through just step-by-step step how to use this program so kids can show you what they know rather than you having to assess, test, whatever. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Here we go. <clears throat> so it is brush.ninja. And um, it, it looks a little different now that we're in um, like version two. There's a bunch of tools here. This is absolutely free. It does not require a login. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead over here and scroll down and you'll see this make animated GIFs. That's really what we're doing. And um, we'll talk kind of through how you can use all these later. Just kind of go ahead and hit animate. So basic interface, that's probably all. And we'll get through drawing tools in this particular video. Um, what you've got here at the top, you have all these tools. So we're going to be stuck in the brush tool. And if your school deploys Chromebooks, there's one thing you're going to want to pay attention to when I get to that um, at the end when you use this with students. You have your brush size, pretty straightforward. And then over here, you have stroke and fill color. Most messed up thing by myself and the students is that right there. So... I'll get into a couple more things as we go. What I like to do is to draw the end state and work backwards. So famous one that I work on with second through uh, eighth graders is just the last letter of my name, Z, on a touch screen or a smart display of any kind where you're standing in front using your hand, it's outstanding. I'm just gonna draw that dumb thing right there. If I had the fill color selected, you'd notice that it would fill in across the beginning and ending point. And that may not be what you want. A lot of students will switch to the eraser and they'll be erasing. And that's one of the problems with Chromebooks weren't really designed to do that on a touch screen, but that's the way kids work natively. So I'm just going to hit undo and it's good to have in your bag of tricks, a bunch of different things. But so essentially that's just a drawing. If you go down and hit play, nothing happens because there's no frames to animate you know, between. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you can see, hey, I can add another frame. Well, I can do a couple things. So since we're in the drawing tools, and that's all I usually do is teach kids the drawing tools at first, I'm just going to add another frame, or you'll see that you can duplicate a frame. So I'll do the one, I'll just add it, you'll notice nothing else is there. I'm going to go back to that black box around the side. And I'm going to get rid of that fill color. And then I'm going to make sure I have the pen color selected. And I'm just going to choose, I don't know, another color. And I'll draw another Z. And then I'll scroll down and I'll hit add. And I'll swap out the color. And so basically, this is one of the first animations that I do. And kids really love it. I don't know what it is, but you can have them do the exact same thing with their last initial or a shape. And so I'll, I'll get one more up here just so you can get the basic idea. And then you click play and it animates between them. And you can tell it's a really jumpy um, and, and it just keeps cycling through. Kids absolutely love this. So the goal of these this particular tutorial is not to get into how you would use this or why. We'll get into that in a couple of the other videos. But the basic idea is, um, can we get kids drawing pretty quickly and then the, there's a problem though, when you look at the drawing that I have here, which is that jumpiness, which is kind of cool. It might be what you're going for, but there's one other tool I'll show you in this tutorial and it's this onion. And you can see it's sort of like tracing paper. I can see everything I've drawn in every frame. Now I'm gonna go back and delete every one of these and sort of start fresh because I don't even like that one. You'll notice I can't delete the one. You actually need something. So if I add it, then go back, I can delete it. So now I'm on my blank slide. I have the onion on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through that exact process again. Now I am using my, my handy dandy um, track pad and it's not meant for this. So uh, feel free to judge, it's okay. So I'm gonna draw a Z and I don't care how good it is. There we go, that's the first one and I'm gonna add another one and you can see that now when I change color, it's much easier to trace almost right over it and if I were using my pen tablet or something like that. But the, you know, the fact is I want subtle changes. That's what animation is all about, movement. So actually I'm gonna switch to the screen. I'll only do a couple of them because you get the basic idea. That one setting is the difference between kids feeling like 
they did a great job and being a little bit frustrated. So <clears throat> let's say that's it, right? That's one type of drawing animation that I like to do. You might make it bigger, you might change the color, you get the idea, I only have four slides, but then it just kind of has this jittery cool, looks much better, less jumpy, a little bit of jitter in there, which is kind of fun. Um, and that is basically the point. If I'm gonna use the draw tool to do this one more time, uh, this is probably, let me pick this this one in the middle. Um, my screen one's probably the best. So I'll go ahead and get rid of the other ones. And another way that I have students animate this way, get rid of those artifacts, is I'll have them draw their end state, what they want it to look like, and then build in, build out. Which means if I duplicate and back up, so I'm going back in time, this is where I'm gonna choose the largest brush I have and turn it to the eraser. Students who want to use their touch screen over and over and over, and usually on a Chromebook, the processor wasn't meant for that. I have had a few of them freeze up. So I always give students a different method, which is um, to use a different tool or um, to just delete the slide and start again if there's that much. So now you can see the difference between these two frames. It's going to keep doing the exact same thing. Duplicate, move back, duplicate, move back. And maybe I should have done the the cross memory thing. I don't know exactly what it's called, like a Cyrillic. I don't even know if that's right. Somebody out there, correct me. I'm okay with that. So I just keep working backwards. And that is the basic idea here until I get one that's pretty much gone. Actually, this may be my last one. So now, um, yeah, I'll do one more. And then we'll just erase this. So this is gonna build in, you can see hit the play. It sort of builds and it's pretty cool, right? And to build out, all I have to do is duplicate a slide and then drag it to the end and then duplicate this. And let's see, go but two back and then drag that one to the end. And now you'll see that it, it starts to build out, right? Um, and so it's just a kind of fun way to get this out to kids. Hey, this is how you get them acclimated to the tools in the same way. Have them draw a shape or a letter and then um, change its color, build it in, build it out, use duplicate, use the um, eraser. And you've got the beginnings of a pretty cool animation. And then you can get into what would be next, in my opinion, which is using this little arrow tool up here to do some um, squash and stretch and some really more advanced animation techniques. But that is the subject of our next video.